In this tutorial, we're going to cover what I think is one of the most important things, or maybe the most important thing in creating a 2D platformer or really any game, and that's a respawn system. One of the worst things is, let's go ahead and, and play, one of the worst things that can happen in a game is you get to the enemy and they kill you. Also, I can kind of show off a, a bug I found with this enemy that we can go ahead and fix. So I jump on this enemy and, you know, they, they hurt me like that. So say that would have killed me. That's the end of the game. There's no respawn, so the character or the player can't continue on. It's really important to have a respawn in there, so if the player messes up, they can continue on. Uh, and making a respawn system is pretty easy. So first thing, actually, before we get into respawn, why was that enemy still hurting me when I uh, fell on top of it? Well, let's jump inside the enemy's brain and we created uh, this else tile here where um, basically when you're not above the enemy and your distance is 0 0.1, the enemy will damage you by 10 points. But if they're dead, they're still going to damage you if they're on the ground. So we just simply need to um, say also is not is dead and then put that as a child line under, under there. Now the enemy will only hurt you if you haven't killed it. So before we killed it, but it was still on the ground, so its code was still technically running, so it was still able to damage me. Now, as soon as it's dead, even though it's kind of still on the ground before it's disappeared, it won't be able to damage me. All right, so that bug is taken care of. And that's something that you'll run into uh, constantly when you're kind of working on one system, you'll realize a bug with another system and have to jump back into it. So, you know, we're, we're probably gonna hit bugs randomly here or there while we're uh, going through this and um, tackling them as we go along them. So, respawn system. First, let's actually bring out an object that will respawn you. The thing that I like to use for a uh, respawner, and I think a lot of people like to use, is this ancient stone landmark, uh, mainly because it's, it's very nice when it's just in the ground, uh, feels like a checkpoint. So let's bring this guy right here. Let's call this uh, initial spawn, because this is going to be your initial spawn point. So this is going to be the kind of first checkpoint. So if you die, you go very back to the very beginning of the level. And then we're going to create a respawn system as well. So um, I'm also going to create a second enemy so we can kind of test this out with respawn system. So let's, let's go ahead and uh, turn on snapped grid. And let's put a second enemy, uh, let, let's say, uh, right here. So we now have a second enemy. So. Uh, you know, the, if that first enemy we get through it, the second one can still harm us. Let's also set our characters, go to combat, uh, health and defense, and let's set the character's health down to 10 points. So they will be killed just by kind of one hit. And now let's, actually we've never named our character. Let's name this player. And let's also make it a template. So go to brain, template, and now our main character is going to be a template too. So slowly we're making everything kind of templates. We now have our coin crate as a template, our coin as a template, our enemy as a template, and now our player is a template too. And we want them to be a template so that we can continue to create a new version of them every time he dies. So first thing to do here is in this uh, initial spawner, we want to have a once. And with this once, we are going to have a new object variable, a global object variable. So we're going to say do global, go to object, and we are going to call this spawn point. Do global spawn point equals, just like how we had global player equals inside the character, this one will also be equal to me. So now we have this new global object variable called spawn point, and it's equal to this thing. And also in this initial spawner, what we can say is when the global player, global, go to objects, choose player, when it is equal to, go to objects, nothing. So basically when there is no global player, nothing has been set as global player. This guy's a template, right? So he's not actually in the scene, he's just waiting to be brought in the scene. So nothing will be a global player because he's not in the scene. Then we can say, let's go ahead and say create. 
and choose this player from the in-world picker. And we're going to also say at position global spawn point uh, go to positioning, offsets, and above. So create player at position global spawn point above. So we're setting global spawn point to be equal to this thing, and then we are creating a player at the global spawn point. We're doing this because we're going to be referencing this global spawn point when we get to checkpoints. Let's go into test. And, oh, look at that. I have two playable characters instead of one. And that is because, um, you know, certain things can sometimes take longer than one line of code to run. And by certain things, I'm talking about evaluating this global player equals to nothing, then creating a player, then reevaluating this, and this hasn't been updated yet, so it creates a second player. So in order to stop that, we just simply say start at two. Start at two again constrains this thing to only running just one frame if the global player is equal to nothing, or if whatever on the win side. Um, is running, this will only happen for one frame. Jump back into test. And now we only have one player. Perfect. Just what we want. And, great thing, let's jump up here. Let's have this goblin kill us. Run into it. And look at that. I'm already spawning back at the beginning. So it's really simple, right? We only have, what, three lines of code? And with those three lines of code, we are already spawning at the beginning again. Now let's take this, copy it, and go ahead and make some checkpoints. So we will make a checkpoint, let's say right here. Good rule of thumb is, I found, you know, if it takes about a minute to two minutes to just walk from one checkpoint to the next, that's about a good range. You don't want checkpoints to be too close to each other, but you don't want them to be too far away. And definitely make sure if you have a really hard platforming section or you know really hard boss section somewhere where the player's gonna die often, make sure you put a checkpoint just before that because if you don't, you know, and the player has to go through two minutes of content just to get to the hard point again, they're gonna get really frustrated. And you wanna reduce the amount of frustration of the player. So this initial spawn point we're going to change to checkpoint. So that's now called checkpoint. And we don't want this running anymore. We don't want to say once global spawn point equals me because then there's going to be some some weird things happening where this spawn point calls itself global spawn point and this thing calls itself global spawn point at the same time. Instead what we want is we actually want this thing to basically use a detect sensor. So we're going to go to sensors, uh, whoops, then choose detect. So when detect um, global go to values, let's say player, then global spawn point equals me. And we also don't need this line of code either. We don't need to have this thing also creating the player because then we're going to have two different things creating a player at the same time. So we can get rid of this. And let's also have this running just one time. So let's put a started to on here. So started to detect global player, then uh, global spawn point equals me. Let's also go into properties, uh, go to brain, Go to sensors. It's just like how we were setting the trigger zone, here's how we can also set the detect sensors. So let's turn that to true. And let's take this little picker right here and let's bring down this detect sensor to just be right around this checkpoint. So now you have to be just right within the checkpoint for this thing to detect you. So that is great. So now when started to detect global player, global spawn point equals me jump into test and what this does is this basically updates what that spawn point is so we're just gonna jump past here we're gonna run over this thing we're gonna be killed by this goblin and now we're spawned at the new checkpoint now let's also give some sort of visual indicator that we've actually walked over this uh, checkpoint 
So let's just put also in here, um, underneath of this is, let's just have a special effect playing. So we're gonna do go to create, play effects, uh, go to objects, gallery picker, and um, what I like is confetti burst. So we're gonna play an FX confetti burst, uh, modifiers, scale, and I'm gonna set the scale to two. So it's gonna be a, a big confetti burst. And the other nice thing is, so I was looking at this, uh, go to properties, appearance, this is where you can change the colors of this object. And I was looking, and it's third color, crystal A. These are blue stones. I would like it if they were red stones. So I can go inside the brain and go to appearance, go to color properties, and set tertiary color equal to, go over to values, color, um, and select red. And this is going to turn the crystals red, but the rest of the stone is going to stay uh, its gray color. All right, let's go back and test. Let's just uh, jump on top of these to get a, a leg up. Oh, it looks like I failed there. All right, so let's get by here. So we had a nice confetti burst, but let's get back here. Every time we run over this, this thing is going to give us a confetti burst now. So we just need to constrain that confetti burst to only happen one time, which is very simple to do because we've used the once tile before and we use it here. So underneath of here, we also just put a once for play confetti burst. And also this setting the color to red, well, that only needs to happen once also. So we are going to have both these once, but it's up to you if you want global spawn point equals me to be once or not. So. If this is once, that means basically you've walked over the spawn point and um, it's only being set as a global spawn point one time. If, for instance, you were you had to say you made a level where you had to go back through it, by not having this once, if you walked over a previous spawn point, this would spawn you at that previous spawn point. But that so that might be something you want to have in your game. Maybe it's something you don't want to have. I'll leave that up to you. It's just simply making this either a child line under once or not a child line. For us, I'm not going to make it a child line because I like the idea of if you backtrack, then basically the spawn point is going to be the most recent spawn point that you've walked over, whether you've walked over it previously or not. And that's it. We have a spawn system already inside of Project Spark. See, that was pretty easy. Next, we're going to look at how to um, respawn and reset your enemies.